Good morning. I'm State Representative Kitty Rhodes, and I am not running for governor. <laughs> for 12 years. And when you first get elected, people say, find your niche, find a little area of government that no one else understands. I came from a family that was really kind of diverse. My mom was the director of the county home health care for 20 years. I listened at dinner when Kip Cop first came into place. When my mom retired from the uh, county, she then went to work at the nursing home. My little niece said, well, what do you do at the nursing home? She said, well, I take care of really old people. She's like, you already retired once. But there we learned a great deal, too, about some of the difficulties of medical assistance funding, capitated rates, and all the ins and outs of long-term care. Um, when I got to the Capitol, family care was coming as a pilot. And um, I didn't realize that not many of my colleagues understood the acronyms KIPP, uh, KIPP-1, waiver, uh, capitated rates. I'm like, I get that. I know what that is. And so I had concerns from day one about family care. We had piloted four or five different programs. Uh, CMS, strong, I even knew CMS was back before it was CMS, uh, strongly recommended that we do the partnership plan. They didn't mandate it, but they recommended it, but we did family care. And I had concerns about it. The original pilot was going to pilot private MCOs only, not up against the county, but then say that they were more efficient than counties were because they had to prove and so Secretary Leon and I, who didn't even was working with Secretary Leon, we really got into it over the pilot program. He goes, who the hell told you about family care in the first place? You're only a freshman. And, well, sorry, but this is what we've got. I have come to be known, rightfully so, as a family care skeptic. I have had difficulties understanding how when you work off capitated rates, the only way you save money is by making lower capitated rates. And we've seen how that happens. As far as I was concerned, when you build family care, you stack up the dominoes, you push the first one, you can see how this is going to end up. I warned my communities to do great consideration before agreeing to come in to the family care. Once you're in, you are never going to be able to justify, get out of the race. I was so concerned about it that I decided Knowing when family care comes into a county, the infrastructure then disappears. The county's not involved. There's no kip and cop anymore. The infrastructure is gone. Um, I spent eight years trying to develop an alternative within long-term care, an alternative to family care. I believed that we could set aside your pot of money. I'd have my money. I would know exactly how much it would be. I would be able to decide what treatment plans I needed, what care I needed. I would be able to decide who would provide that care. I would be in charge of my care. And I actually called it my care. It took eight years to get that program in place. Now, it's not called IRIS. I still think my care was a better name. But it's interesting to see in the book that I was going to refer to as Family Care's Kid Sister. <laughs> I think it's an alternative. There are bumps in both programs, but they need to have an alternative because I'm not sure that family care will work for everybody, and I'm not sure about the sustainability. I have had those concerns since the beginning. When I served on the state budget committee, I actually postponed the expansion of family care for multiple reasons. But number one, accountability. We wanted to know how much it was cost. Was it cost effective? Was it cost neutral? Was it providing the services? that we had promised that we would provide to the individuals who were there. I still maintain those same concerns. And we have hit major bumps recently with family care, and that's no surprise to any of you who are sitting in this room. Apparently, my name has become the complaint center. And if you have an issue with family care, I now have a staff from MCOs, from consumers, from providers, from everybody with here's the issues we're having with family care. It's about two inches thick. This is one of the few times since I've been in the legislature where everyone who is involved in the program is saying, time out, we need to take a look at this program. From the providers to the consumers to the caregivers are all saying, time out. I agree, time out. We should stop the expansion of family care until we are able to complete a financial and operational audit of the program. We need to know that it's sustainable. We need to know that it's sustainable and that it will be there. 
these people are real people who count on us to do what we said we were going to do. This is not a partisan issue. Governor Thompson started family care, Governor McCallum continued it, as did Governor Doyle. I told all three of them I thought it was a mistake, but they continued. So it's not partisan. We have bipartisan support in that committee chairs who are Democrats have called for an audit. This is not partisan and it's not political. It is purely a As we are on a tight deadline, we only have about five session days left. We adjourn at the end of April. My fear, and I have a cross-stitch sampler in my office that I made years ago, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. And so my fear is that if we adjourn this session without having scheduled this audit on family care, it will never happen. And we will go back to all the troubles we had in last fall and last winter. We need to have the two chairs of the audit committee schedule this audit while we are in session. I have committed, I have the, we've got the votes to get a family care audit. We have it. The question is getting the committee to meet and getting it to take place. They have said, quote unquote, an audit on family care is a slam dunk, but they didn't say this session. They didn't say when. Not in a lifetime. We need to do this now. We need to come in and prove that it is sustainable and it will be there in the future. I thank all of you for your help because we have put out the word in grassroots form. We need you to continue to convince your legislators and your elected officials that this audit has to take place. And I want to thank you all because I've heard from them. They're getting the calls. They understand. In fact, something, could you make it stop now? No. No, we're not going to until we have it. I know, and we've been told by many of the providers, if we need to be at the Capitol, we will be at the Capitol to do this. So I'm grateful for all your help, and I want to thank you because we could not have gotten this to the forefront as quickly as we had without you. And I really do appreciate your help. I announced in the past few weeks that I am not going to run for re-election. Might never sell my life to become an elected official. Now it's time to see what my life's leading me to. This is the one thing that I want to get done before we leave. The audit on family care. So we may call on your help again, and we appreciate it. But know this, it's the right thing to do, and we will get it done. Thank you.